In this video, we're going to be finding the average. Keep in mind that average means many things. And so here's our objectives. We're going to review mean, median, and mode. And we're going to learn about a new concept called the mean absolute deviation, how to compute that, and what that means, how to use it in our data analysis. Here's our quick review. You should have learned these last year in math class. You've learned these many times before, so we're just going to quickly go over these definitions. The mean is many times what we think of when we talk about the average. Another word for it is the arithmetic mean, and basically you add up all your data and you divide by the number of data points. The median is that middle number. You take your numbers, you, your data points, you list them in ascending order, and the median is the point in the middle. And the mode is the data point which occurs most often. Now, I'm a big Panthers fan. The Panthers had a great 2015 season. They ended the regular season 15-1. and one, And uh, this coming week, they're getting ready to play in, the in Super Bowl 50. So for this video, all of our examples come from the statistics from the Panthers. And we want to remember to keep pounding. Let's look at our MVP quarterback, Cam Newton. Here is his statistics uh, from the 2015 regular season. This is how many passing yards he had each game. And you can see the list there. And we're going to compute the mean, the median, and the mode. Before we do anything else, let's go ahead and rewrite these numbers. Let's list them in ascending order uh, from lowest to highest. Okay, here's our data points. We have now listed them in ascending order. And I'm going to do these the easiest uh, ones first. Let's begin with the mode. If we look at all of our data, none of our data points occur, occur more than one time. So we would say that there is no mode. Let's move to the median. The median is the middle number. We have 16 data points, so we're going to count over to the middle. Half of 16 is 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So our median is technically right in here, in between the 246 and the 248. And the way we get the median when there is no exact middle because we have an even number of data points is we will take the mean of these two points. So the point that's in between 246 and 248 is 247. Now it's time to find our mean. We're going to add up all of our numbers. When we add everything up, I've taken the liberty of a calculating this ahead of time. We have 3,837 total yards for Cam this year. That's 16 games. So we divide that by 16. And we get 239, and I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, 0.8 yards per game. So our mean for this set of data is 239.8. That is your quick review of what mean, median, and mode are. Let's talk about mean absolute deviation, abbreviated as MAD, M-A-D. The definition of the mean absolute deviation is the mean of the distances of each value from their mean. And I'll talk about what that means in just a second. Let me give you a list of steps on how to compute that first. The steps for finding the mean absolute deviation are, first of all, step one, you have to find the mean of your data. The second step is to find the distance from the mean to each data point. And finally, we find the mean of those distances that we found in step two. Now, I know that that sounds very, very confusing, so let's look at an example to help us understand this process. Let's find the mean absolute deviation of this set of data. 
we have the following numbers. 1, 3, 3, 4, 6, 6, 7, 8. And I've already taken the liberty of finding the mean of these numbers, and it is 4.75. Our task now is to find the distance from that mean to each one of our data points. I've taken the liberty of going ahead and putting each one of our data points into a table with two columns. The first column will be our data point itself, and our second column is where we find the difference or the distance between the mean and the data. So in this case, I'm essentially just taking the mean 4.75 and subtracting 1 from it to get the distance of 3.75. To find this distance, I said 4.75 minus 1, and got 3.75. That's how I got that number. And I did the same thing for every number in my table. Now, if my number came up negative, I just went ahead and made it positive because we're finding a distance. Distance cannot be negative. Now, when I add all of these distances up, everything in this second column, I will get 16, and I have 8 distances I divide that by 8, and I get an answer of 2. So in this case, the mean absolute deviation is 2. Let's talk about why that's important. The mean absolute deviation actually gives us a measure of central tendency. We know that our mean is 4.75. But now we can look <clears throat> and see how well our data is clustered numerically by saying, well, we deviate from that mean an average of two data points. So that tells us how um, centrally located our data is. And that comes into play, particularly when we are comparing more than one data set uh, from different places. And we can see how they are centrally uh, distribute it in reference to one another. So, now we've been reviewing our mean, median, and mode. We've learned how to do the mean absolute deviation. Let's do all four on two more different sets of data. Let's look at Jonathan Stewart, starting running back for the Carolina Panthers. And before he was injured, he played in 13 games in the 2015 season and here are his rushing totals for each game. We're going to find the mean, median, mode and the mean absolute deviation. I've taken the liberty of going ahead and sorting our data from lowest to highest so we can go ahead and find the mode. Let's just go ahead and do that. So the mode will be the number that occurs the most often and Looking at our data, 82 is the only number that occurs more than one time. So that would be our mode. Now let's find the median. The median is going to be the central number, the middle number. And in this case, we have 13 data points. So 7 is going to be right in the very middle. So as we count our way over, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 75 is in the center point. Now we want to count backwards from the other end just to make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes, 75 is in the exact middle. That is our median. And now we're going to find our mode. Excuse me, 
our mean. And we're going to add all these numbers up. Again, I've taken the liberty of doing this beforehand. So we have 989 total yards when we add up all 13 data points. We divide that by 13. And to the nearest tenth, we get 76.1. Our mean is 76.1. So we've done the three that we know how to do. Mean, median, and mode. Now it's time to take this data and let's find the mean absolute deviation. Here's our table. Again, I've taken the liberty of taking the da uh, data and putting it into a table where the first column is the data point and the second column is the distance between those points, data point, the distance between those, and to save some room I put it into a two column format. So if we want to find the mean absolute deviation here, we're going to add up all of these distances in the second column of each half of the table. And when we do, we will get 207. Point one, and we're going to divide that by 13 and to the nearest tenth that's 15.9 so the mean average deviation is 15.9 again just to review how we got that number if our mean is 76.1 and our data point is 50 we say 76.1 Subtract 50, we get 26.1. And we do that all the way down the line and add up each one of these to find their average. Okay, for our last example, let's use the statistics for Greg Olson, starting tight end for the 2015 NFC South champion Panthers, soon to be Super Bowl champions. He's also a pro bowler. And here we see the number of receptions he had each game listed per game. Let's go ahead and list these in ascending order so that we can find our mode and our median more easily. Here they are in ascending order. And if we look for the data points that occur the most often, we see that the 3 and the 6 both occur 3 times each. So they will share the role of mode. 3 and 6 is our mode. Now let's find the median. We have 16 data points, so we're going to find out what the number is between our 8th and 9th. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Our median is going to fall right between the 4 and the 5, so that would be... 4.5. Next, let's find the mean. We got to add all these up, divide by 16 to find our mean. I've taken the liberty of doing this ahead of time. We add all these up and we get 77 divided by 16. We round that to the nearest tenth and we get. 4.8. Mean, median, and mode. Those are easy. We're used to those. Now for the final piece, let's find out what the mean absolute deviation is. Again, I've taken the liberty of going ahead and putting this into a table to make it easier for us to do. And we see that in the first column of each half of the table, we had the data point. In the second column of each half of the table, we have the difference between the mean and data point, which is also the distance. To remind ourselves how we got that, to get 
3.8, we had to say 4.8 minus 1, and that's how we got the 3.8 in this column. And we did the same thing all the way through. So we add up all of our distances, and when we do, we will get 33. And we divide that by 16. We round that to the nearest tenth, and we will get 2.1. So the mean absolute deviation is 2.1. To wrap up what we've learned, we've learned that the Panthers were the best team in the NFL. We've learned that Cam Newton is well deserving of his MVP award he received this year. We reviewed mean, median, and mode, and we learned about the mean absolute deviation, which gives us an idea of central tendency. In class tomorrow, we will take some of these concepts that you've learned on this video and taken notes from, and you'll get a chance to put it to practice on your own. Keep pounding.